item on the agenda. We have a need for an executive session. I'm open for a motion. Mr. Teeter. Like a big motion to go to executive session pursuant to CRS 24-6-402 parentheses four parentheses A and E to discuss and determine the negotiation position regarding the potential purchase of facility known as the Honan Building. Thank you. Councilmember Davis. Second by Mr. Mayor. I have a motion and a second to go into executive session. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, say nay. Motion is carried. We are in executive session. Um, we're told that this should take about 30 minutes, so please bear with us. We'll be back out here in a few minutes.
All right, I'm going to call the meeting back to order. Thank you for your patience. Next, I'd like to ask everybody to stand for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Now, if the staff will pass around the uh, microphone, allow the audience to introduce themselves. Thank you. Karen O'Donnell, Parks, Recreation, and Golf. Ryan Borchert, Parks, Recreation, and Golf. Paul Hebink, Parks, Recreation, and Golf. Lisa Nordholt, Recreation. <laughs> Maria Jepson, Parks, Recreation, and Golf. Derek Tripp, PRG. Jenna Lowry, City Manager's Office. Joe Wilson, Public Works. Paul Wielander, Parks, Recreation, and Golf Advisory Committee. Dustin Case. Jim Travis. Luke Coates. Spencer Crouch. Stephanie Harvey. Kay Stallworthy. Chris Mestis. Seth Berry. Katie Berry. Elliot Selsky. Iona Long Soldier. Zach Moore. Ryan Seastrom. Nick Klebenstein. Megan Grimes. Daryl Lamb. Oh, it's cake. Oh. And Ron Velasquez. Thank you all for being here tonight. Start off our meeting with a proclamation. I'd like to invite uh, Parks Rec and Golf. Staff forward, please. Hi, Carolyn. Honorable Mayor, members of City Council, um, I would like to thank some of my peers and fellow workers of the Parks, Recreation, and Golf Department. But I would also like to acknowledge Paul Wielander as a representative of our Parks, Recreation, and Golf um, Advisory Committee. And before I turn this over to Karen O'Donnell this evening to tell you a little bit about what will be happening during July, which is Parks, Recreation, and Golf Month, I do want to share with you all that after eight years of employment with the City of Commerce City, we are very proud to say that Karen O'Donnell will be going to the city of Wheat Ridge as the Director of Parks and Recreation. And wanted to just let you all know that and give her that acknowledgement. While we're all very sad that she'll be leaving our city and our department, these types of opportunities don't come along very often. And it's just a credit to what Karen has done in her career, but also the opportunities that the City of Commerce City provides for employees through professional development and just the opportunities that we have in parks, recreation, and golf here in our community. So I wanted to say thanks to Karen and let you all know that and hopefully celebrate with us um, her accomplishment in this promotion. So with that, I'll turn it over to her to tell you a little bit about what's happening in July. Thank you. Thank you, Carolyn, and thank you, uh, members of the council and honorable mayor. I just wanted to tell you about the exciting things that are happening this month. We are having a social media contest. And if you're not familiar, we had um, a youth and teens Facebook page for a long time, and that's recently transferred over to our department Facebook page for Parks, Recreation, and Golf. So if you're not following, and if everyone listening here and at home is not following, please follow us. And we also have an Instagram page. So there we'll be having a social media contest where people 
can post their recreation activities at rec centers, parks, Fourth Fest, the golf course, and um, we'll have three winners on both platforms, Facebook and Instagram, and, and winners can receive day passes to Paradise Island, to the rec centers, and swag bags. There's all sorts of different things that we have available. Those rules and all that information will be posted on July 4th, and our Parks, Recreation, and Golf Advisory Committee and our Youth Advisory Committees will be judging those entries to select winners. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that um, we will have free fitness opportunities in the parks to celebrate Parks, Recreation, and Golf Month, and those will be at Frontera and um, Pioneer Park, so we'll be looking for those posts on social media as well. So that's all. All right, well, thank you, Thanks. and uh, congratulations on your <clears throat> new position, as much as we hate to see you leave Commerce City. We appreciate all the work that you've done. And with that said, Mr. Attorney, will you read this proclamation, please? Whereas parks and recreation programs are an integral part of communities throughout this country, including Commerce City, and whereas our park and recreation programs are vitally important to establishing and maintaining the quality of life in our communities, ensuring the health of all citizens, and contributing to the economic and environmental well-being of a community. And whereas parks and recreation programs build healthy, active communities that aid in the prevention of chronic disease, provide therapeutic recreation services for individuals with disabilities, and also improve the mental and emotional health of all citizens, and whereas parks and recreation areas are fundamental to the environmental well-being of our community, and whereas our parks and natural recreation areas ensure the ecological beauty of our community and provide a place for children and adults to connect with nature and rec recreate outdoors, and whereas the United States House of Representatives has designated, designated July as Parks and Recreation Month, and whereas the City of Commerce City recognizes the benefits derived from parks and recreation resources. Now, therefore, the City Council of Commerce City does hereby proclaim July as Parks and Recreation Month in the City of Commerce City and encourages all citizens to share the individual benefits that come from Parks and Recreation. Thank you. Mr. Davis? Your light's on? That's all right. I'm open for a motion. Mr. Huseman. Motion to approve the proclamation, recognizing this as Parks and Recreation. Thank you. Mr. Douglas? Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the proclamation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Motion is carried. I'd like to ask the council to come down, take a picture as we give the proclamation to the Parks and Rec and Golf staff. All righty, next on the agenda is the citizen communication. Per our council policy, citizen, citizen communication is the time on our agenda for the public to address the council on business and affairs of the city. If you're here to speak on an ordinance or a resolution that is not on the consent agenda, please wait until that item is called and the city council is unable to hear any comments on land use matters that are before or may come before city council. Please reserve such comments for the appropriate public hearing, and please give your name and address for the record, and keep your comments limited to three minutes. And thank you. 
We'll start at the top of the list. Luke Coates. Mayor Ford, uh, City Council, it's good to be with you. Luke Coates, 332 Mountain View Drive, Berthoud. And I represent friends, colleagues, and, uh, and associates that live and work and thrive here in this great city of Commerce City. Um, I'm proud to be an American. And with uh, Independence Day approaching, I think at times we take for granted the great freedoms that we enjoy. Uh, we take for granted the men and women that have gone before us and have died for the freedoms that we have. In, um, at, at times, we often take for granted uh, the, uh, the development of, of energy and the freedom that that also awards us here in this country. Um, even, even a matter of a few years ago, we were dependent on uh, natural resources from hostile countries. Um, how proud can we be um, as a country that we're no longer dependent on, on people and countries that, that are opposed to us, that we are energy independent. Um, we also take for granted at times what, what energy has done for our environment, for our air and our water. Um, since the 1980s, uh, Prager University did a study and and it shows a direct correlation with the, cons with the consumption of natural gas. Um, the higher the consumption of, the more natural gas that we've consumed, the cleaner our water is and the cleaner our air is. Uh, since the 1980s, we've had a drastic reduction in CO2 emissions. Um, it's incredible what we've done with our technologies. If the world followed our lead, if the world followed our lead it, as this country, uh, China and India, and if they switched over and consumed natural gas, the CO2 emissions globally would reduce by nearly 90%. Um, and we would um, completely change the global climate and the global en environment. That's something that we can be proud of. Um, we want to continue to innovate. We want to continue to provide a clean, safe environment for our citizens. Um, I'm proud to say that that Colorado has led the charge. Um, 2014, there were 70 rigs working in Colorado. Today, there's, there's only about 30. Um, the footprint is smaller, the technology is greater, and the impact is less, and it's improving, the technologies are improving the air and the water. Um, so I thank you for the opportunity, and um, I'm proud to be an American. Happy Independence Day. Thank you. Jim Travis. Good evening, City Council, Mayor Ford. Thank you for taking the time and for allowing me the opportunity to speak. Tonight, uh, well, first off, I live at 10233 Salida Street here in Commerce City. And tonight I wanted to take the opportunity to thank you all very much for, for tempering the vote on the, uh, on the moratorium on oil and gas. Um, the last time that, that we spoke about the oil and gas moratorium was two weeks ago. It's the first time that I'd ever addressed you all as a group. Now I'd addressed Brighton City Council, uh, Adams County commissioners, uh, but never Commerce City, never felt like I had to. Uh, I wanted to thank you so much for tempering that. Um, while my, the business that I own is not in Commerce City, the majority of, the, of my employees do reside here in Commerce City. Uh, we are a blue collar company, we are a fabrication company, and we've been in business for over 100 years now. Um, many of our employees live here, and to, to think what, what would happen if uh, we continue to hang out our closed uh, close for business signs on the front doors of our communities. Boy, it, uh, it, it scares me to think about that. And fear is why I was here the last time and gratitude is why I'm here tonight. Thank you all so much for tempering the vote. Thank you all for not forcing so many companies like mine uh, in, into decisions um, that, are ve that are very hard to make. Um, oil and gas is how we make our living. That's where we sell our products. Uh, so myself and my employees, we thank you very much for tempering your vote on the moratorium on oil and gas. Appreciate you. Have a good thank night. Thank you. Seth Barry. <coughs> good 
Good evening, City Council members and uh, Mayor Ford. I just wanted to thank you. Uh, my name is Seth Barry. I live at 10069 Yampa Street, right here in Commerce City. Um, I just wanted to thank you for tabling the vote last time. I was basically here out of fear last time, and this time I'm here out of gratitude. And as the Rockies Regional Manager for Pioneer Pipe, we sell nothing but utilities, oil and gas products, and I feel like I moved to a business-friendly environment now, and I want to thank you for that. So have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good fourth. Katie. Hi, I, my name is Katie Berry. I also live at 169 Yampa Street in Reunion, Old Commerce City. And I just wanted to say thank you to the City Council and Honorable Mayor for not doing the drilling moratorium. It means a lot. And I will definitely continue to support Commerce City and shop here and spread the word of Commerce City to people. And I just really appreciate it because it's definitely our livelihood and something that is very important to us and a lot of other people in many ways, even if they don't know it. So thank you. Thank you. Chris Mastis. Council Member Ford, thank you. My name is Chris Mestis. I live at 11487 Jasper Street. And uh, like my colleagues here, I want to say thank you for you know, um, holding the uh, vote on the, uh, the moratorium. As uh, being in the oil and gas engineering business, our number one goal is not only the safety of the public and the health and safety, is also the safety of the facilities that we engineer. Um, our main goal is to you know, um, provide safe facilities for our oil and gas industries so that um, we can have, um, you know, a great oil and gas production in the state of Colorado. Um, it, the oil and gas industry also provides very good high paying jobs to a lot of people in the city of Commerce City and the state of Colorado as well. Um, so being afford, being able to afford a good salary, you know, we are able to provide our families with good housing and, and good facilities in the, the city of Commerce City so we can continue development in, in residential and commercial. So I just want to say, um, take the time to say thank you for uh, your time. Thank you. Daryl Lamb. Good evening. Good evening, City Council. My name is Daryl Lamb. I live at 6970 Jasmine Street. And I just had a question I wanted to uh, propose. Uh, I was wanting to know, is anything being done to attract or draw a family-style restaurant into Commerce City so that uh, the citizens here can have a place to go where they can dine in the evening that would offer American food you know, and comfort food, you know, normal com comfort food? Uh, as a present, there's many restaurants and places here in Commerce City, but so many of them close before we even get off work. And almost none of them that I know of offer regular American food. And I just wanna know if anything was being done or any, anything is in the progress of drawing some companies in, like places like Denny's, Perkins, IHOP, any of those places, where they could be open to serve the people that work you know, during the day and people that are uh, yeah, available at night that were looking for some place to eat. Most towns, as you, as you travel through, there's always at least one place that's you know, visible that will draw the people in where they can have a place to dine. When you come through Commerce City coming down 85, there's nothing. You don't see any places to eat, and people are passing right on through because they don't see, know of any places to eat. So I just wanted to know if something is being in the works for that. There are some things that um, we've been doing and we've been actually pretty aggressive as a council to achieve some sit-down restaurants in all parts of our community. One of those things is we have uh, reduced the cost to restaurants, the uh, development fees um, and, and things of that nature. We've improved our incentive packages for sit-down restaurants. Uh, matter of fact, the council, several of the members of this council were with me today 
and we uh, broke ground on a new restaurant uh, that should be built and opened by the end of the year. Um, it's State House 84? 38. 38. State House 38, and it's a American food place, and it's going to be on 104th and Chambers. Um, we're also constantly trying to improve sit-down restaurant opportunities in the southern portion of our city as well. I know there has been some interest um, in some of the restaurants that he, you had mentioned along that 60th Avenue and Highway 85 area where the old Taco Star sits. Um, that property has redevelopment opportunities. Um, we can't at this time because of negotiations that are going on with our Economic Development Department disclose who uh, those users are. But absolutely one of our priorities, matter of fact, I believe it's our top priority, is sit down restaurants throughout our community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Rita. I don't want to mispronounce the last name. Good evening. Thank you so much for letting me speak. And uh, I appreciate you not pronouncing my name. It's Rita Tseluk from Ukraine, so okay. the name. Uh, I'm part of the investment group, and I'm glad I came here. I already learned a little bit just from previous uh, gentlemen. Uh, we are uh, under contract tr and trying to purchase two properties to, re to develop and to uh, have as an ownership uh, at Commerce City. And that's why we, I'm ca I came here so I can just uh, kind of be a part of the city and feel the atmosphere. And I hope Commerce City, just by name of it, is business friendly, and that's what I actually felt by talking to engineering, so no problems yet. Uh, one of the properties we're purchasing is uh, I-2 zoning. We're planning to change zoning to C3, and uh, eating establishment is a part of that. So I just uh, heard that it's also part of the plans that city would like to see, m maybe more uh, food establishments, because we think that city would probably benefit from it, and so is... Uh, it's probably going to be good business to have. We definitely feel that it's not enough. And uh, just uh, we've been developing in Denver and Adams County and city of Glendale and just wanted to see if we can help the city and maybe if you, we, I can learn who do I need to talk to, how to, just to, so I will go in the same wind as city is going, and we'll make sure that everybody's benefiting and we're just trying to do what's right for residents and everybody else. Well, thank you for coming in tonight. Um, first and foremost, we have to be careful about discussing any land use changes um, because those are things that will come before this council in a public hearing manner, and we can't prejudge those cases. However, as you heard tonight, there is interest and in, in a, a lot of need for sit-down restaurants and eateries within our community. Um, if you have an interest to invest and purchase property and, and develop or, or change some land uses uh, to improve opportunities within this community, the first place to start is at the planning division, which is right across the hallway from the council chambers. Um, come in eight to five during the daytime. Uh, there will be a planner there that could help walk you through things. Uh, it's important also to meet with our economic development department um, to see what they would have to offer from incentives based on what your intent, intent and uses would be. But uh, there's folks here tonight. The city manager and the attorney um, can help direct you. But first stop, economic development and planning and, and uh, development would be, would Thank be you where very I would direct you. Thank you very much. I already have a meeting on Wednesday with planning department, and I will schedule one more with economic development for Perfect. your advice. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Thank you. <coughs> that takes us through our list. Is there anyone in the audience who came that intended to speak and didn't get a chance to sign up that wants to speak? Sir, come on up. <coughs> Need your name and address for the record, please. My name is Ron Velasquez, 6906 Colorado Boulevard. Uh, I'd like to complain about the uh, traffic down that road. I've been a resident of Commerce City um, a lot of years, probably as 
more years than um, Councilman Teeter's been alive. <laughs> and that's many, many years. <laughs> and uh, that road is uh, very busy. It's got truck traffic, gas trucks, cement trucks, um, you name it. Uh, and right now it's uh, almost like a Bandemir Speedway down that road. And if there's something that can be done to curb the speeding, the uh, truck uh, using uh, the Jake brakes, I've talked to you, Councilman, uh, uh, Mr. Ford, about it. If, uh, two things have happened. <clears throat> One was the police come up and put a radar detector on a pole for about two weeks. After that, they put up the uh, speed uh, zone uh, lighting for a couple of weeks, and not much more has that I notice has been done. Uh, usually when I see a Commerce City police officer down that way, which is far, few and far between, I've wanted to go over and ask him if he was lost in that area. Um, I know there are things that can be done. Maybe more stop signs at 64th uh, Avenue because you have the light rail going in on 70th Avenue. Uh, the next busy uh, street would be 68th and then 64th. And then, of course, uh, down by Brighton Boulevard. Uh, I know you won't uh, uh, put any speed bumps up because it's a uh, snow removal area for winter time, but I'm thinking that you could put up temporary speed bump. I know they have them. I worked at Suncor Energy. They had them going into their place where they just put them down, spiked them down. You could do that in the summertime and remove those come winter. That is my complaint. I would like to see something you know, done. I get tired of hearing the Jake brakes coming down from the gas trucks, um, you name it. There's many things in Commerce City that need to be looked at. I could tell you a lot of things. I see they finally fixed the bridge that was bad, that was going under 60th Avenue. I tried, oh. My time. Right, I'm, I'm glad you came in uh, tonight. I've talked to you several times on the phone, and I've, I've carried your complaints on to the city manager, and that's why you did see uh, the speed trailers and things of that nature. However, there's a few things that are happening with the additional growth, not just of Commerce City, but the migration to Colorado. We're seeing a lot more traffic. It's having an impact, especially migratory traffic through our community. And then we do have a person on our council, our newest council member, Mr. Hurst, is with CDOT on the heavy hauling division. <clears throat> and there's some restrictions that uh, CDOT's now enforcing on um, interstates. And so it's forcing some of these heavy haulers to use alternate routes, and it's starting to have a major effect on our community. Um, not only are they using Colorado Boulevard to get to and from Suncor and, and uh, avoiding uh, I-76, but they're also coming up 85 to 104th, because that's where it turns into I-76. They're coming up 104th to Highway 2 and then coming down Highway 2, because they think uh, State Highway 2 is still a state highway, and it's not. It's, it's a city road. And most it, of the time when someone comes and complains about traffic or calls me, exactly. they're complaining that it's uh, a speed trap on Highway 2 and everything else. And our intent is for safety. But we do have uh, Mr. Joe Wilson is in the back. He's the director of uh, public works who takes care of traffic counts and things of that nature. Also, the chief of police, um, Clint, is in the back also. And I would ask both of them to have a conversation with you to make sure uh, that they go over and, and check out the area and see what can be done to reduce Jake breaks. And I know there was a sign issue that we talked about Hopefully that sign got put back up. Well, there's there's signs on both ends of the. Of but someone that, needs to enforce the signs of that road. Right. One coming from the from the south and one coming from the north, okay. over by the uh, 
Adams County uh, Police Station right. is one of them. Um, I know you told me to get on to the c3gov.com. Yep. I've tried to get on there, and every time I tried to send it, it says I do not recognize your your uh, email. All right. Well, we so have people that can now, help you with that as well. Otherwise, I would I would have right. And we went want that you route. To, we want you to utilize that. But I think if uh, Mr. Wilson and the chief, um, w if you would go just out the door here, the chief and Mr. Wilson can have a discussion with you to try to. Um, see what we can come up with to identify a way to take care of some of your problems. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you for coming in tonight. I thank you. Have a good day. <clears throat> Is there anyone else in the audience that wanted to speak? Ma'am, come on up. You in the front row. My name is Lois Cagle. I live at 6950 Colorado Barb, and I'm really concerned about the traffic. There's more and more people that act like it's Vandermeer or like they're part of that stupid movie. But it's something's got to be done because somebody's going to seriously get hurt one day. There's kids on that street. Dogs get out of people's yard. And I'm, something's got to be done. Well, we just heard that from the gentleman that you're sitting with. Yeah, I'm his neighbor. Yeah, I'm sure. I know right where you're at. But uh, we will have the chief sitting here, and so is our public works director and our city manager. So we'll be looking into your concerns. Oh, okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. All right, next. Come on up. Good evening, Mayor Ford and Council. My name is Megan Grimes. I live at 11788 Fair Play Street in Commerce City. I don't want to take up a bunch of your time tonight, but I just wanted to kind of cap off some of the um, other energy comments this evening. And I want to want to thank you all as well for tempering the vote on a moratorium. But I did want to offer, um, extend a hand in your direction. I am always happy to work as a liaison. If you have questions, if you have concerns um, about pending permits or what operations are or what different pieces of equipment are or what um, terminology means. You know, oil and gas and energy industries, it's a complex industry. And then unless you work in it all the time every day, there's a lot of questions. So I just wanted to offer um, that I'm always here. You all have my contact information. Um, please reach out. And I'm happy to, to be that connection to the industry if you need that. And I just want to also ask that we keep the lines of communication open. Um, <laughs> as we go forward. So, you know, any questions, comments, please reach out. Thank you, Thank guys. You. Is there anyone else wishing to speak during citizen communication? Seeing none, we'll move on to the next item in our agenda, which is the consent agenda. The consent agenda includes items that are routine, procedural, informational, self-explanatory, and non-controversial. They're presented to council for a single motion and vote. Any member of council may ask to remove a specific item for further discussion and a separate vote. Tonight, there are four items listed under the consent agenda. Does anyone on the council wish to remove an item off of the consent agenda? Mr. Douglas? No, no that's one before. Okay. Anyone wish to remove an item off of the consent agenda? Seeing none, and I'm, o I'm open for a motion to approve the consent agenda. Mr. Hurst. You're going to have to turn your microphone on. Motion to approve consent agenda as written. Thank you. Um, Mr. Madera. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Will the city attorney please read the titles? Resolution 2019-74, Resolution Awarding Concrete Flatwork Replacement and Repair Project to Alpine Civil Construction, Inc., Ordinance 2215, and Ordinance Amending the 2019 Budget of the City of Commerce City, Colorado, by the recognition of the E-470 Transportation Safety Foundation Grant in the amount of $2,500 to be utilized to transform an existing police vehicle into a hybrid police taxi vehicle and the authorization of the expenditure thereof. 
Ordinance Z956-19, an ordinance rezoning from agricultural to industrial one. The property described in Exhibit A attached here to and made a part hereof located on a portion of 8705 Rosemary Street in the southwest corner of Rosemary Street and East 88th Avenue, Commerce City, Colorado, and amending the zoning map of the City of Commerce City, Colorado to reflect said rezoning. Ordinance Z4188795519, an ordinance amending Ordinance Z4188795 to remove all remaining conditions from the zoning for the property located at 8150 Syracuse Street, Commerce City, Colorado. Thank you. I have a motion and a second. Titles have all been read. I'll ask for a roll call vote. For the record, the consent agenda is approved unanimously by the council this evening. Next item on the agenda is our public hearings. We have <clears throat> CDBG annual action plans, and tonight um, there will be four resolutions re <clears throat> regarding the city CB CDBG annual action plan. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and open up the public hearing and invite Cheryl Steinberg, our CDBG coordinator, to make a presentation. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm Cheryl Steinberg, the CDBG coordinator for the city. And tonight I need to present to you the 2019 annual action plan and the need to amend the 2016, 2017, and 2018 annual action plans. The presentation basically will review the 2019 plan and we need to reallocate unspent funds from the three previous years, uh, totaling $115,840. As the council knows, um, the purpose of an annual action plan that we must do every year for HUD, it identifies and prioritizes <coughs> community development, economic development, and housing needs, sets uh, the project goals and outcome measures, demonstrates the needs for the project, and then serves actually as the application to HUD um, each year for funding. And this all fits within the consolidated plan that the city adopted back in 2016 to become an entitlement community where we have 15 different high priority needs listed here that go into five basic categories. They are neighborhood revitalization and public facilities, housing needs, economic development, public services, and fair housing activities. And every year we follow the citizen participation plan and we reach out to the community to get their input, their ideas, um, their what's working, what's not working, what they see they need in the community. This year we did very well. We used 15 different medias. Uh, thank you, communications department. And um, as a result, we had a lot of contact with residents. I was able to either present or speak with or meet with 71 different organizations and based on the release of the minor home repair programs, um, uh, we had, I had directly 400, over 400, about 425 contacts with residents since uh, we started advertising that program. So we've talked about a lot, to a lot of folks about the different opportunities with CDBG. Based on those talks, we then asked for applications every March of every year from nonprofits and within the city departments to fund projects based on the criteria that we have in our consolidated plan. And then we get together with the CDBG team, which is re represented from departments and divisions in the city, and they review the applications and we rank uh, them based on this, these seven criteria. So it's viability and risk. How are they gonna do with CDBG? Is it eligible? Consistency with a consolidated plan, as I mentioned before overall benefit and impacts to the city, the applicant's experience and ability to implement the project they're proposing, benefits to low to moderate income residents, supplementary funding and leveraging they might be providing to the program, and then is it adopted in a city plan? And as a result, the CDBG team ranked and recommended funding to council based on this chart here, that's what we put together. So I'm gonna spend some time here going over it with you. Um, at the top here is 
$484. That's what the allocation to us this year for 2019. That year starts October 1st. Of that, 20% is allocated to administration. And then we have a cap on what we can allow for public services. Um, public services is kind of the non brick and mortar type of the part of the project. And that then is limited to $64,273. So taking the six applications that came in for public services, four of them were new. Um, we have number one ranked as the returning applicant with police department. It's a domestic violence victim support program. Last year alone, they had 599 calls of domestic abuse. And they, since the program has been in, in, instilled or started or launched it's about 10 months ago, we've been able to assist 34 households and over 100 residents um, with um, homelessness avoidance and crime prevention and safety. And they, the department is run, it's a 10 member uh, group with DVV run by Kim Messina and they've done an outstanding job. The number two ranked organization is Audio Information Network of Colorado. This service is for uh, blind residents and low vision residents in the city that cannot read for, because of their vision. And this is a pilot program they're implementing around the community uh, in the Denver metro area. We would be, I believe, the fourth. And it provides the equipment, the training, the installation, and ongoing support of in, uh, installing a smart speaker into the home of these residents who are primarily elderly. And one of the big problems they encounter is the isolation of just not being so able to go out and um, engage the community. So they would have access to web-based medical care, transportation, shopping and groceries, um, finding out what's <coughs> happening locally. The connected, for example, would be read into the audio information networks um, library or they have over 1,500 current publications read bilingually into their program that are ac accessible by uh, blind and low vision residents in Colorado wide. So they would have access to that as well. And it's far more easier, far easier um, for residents, um, not ha especially elderly, who are not familiar or comfortable with computers, to simply say, Alexa, I need to schedule an Uber. Alexa, I need to order my groceries now. And that prompts them online and where they can access what they need verbally. Um, Groundworks Denver is the third program. This is a youth training program that provides projects around the city. They've been in, uh, I think, here in the city for three years now. Maybe more, I'm not 100% sure, but definitely three years. And they do projects around the community that are environmentally based. So this program kind of gives us triple benefit. It's a youth program, a youth employment program, and it does projects around the community. What they've done, for example, this year is um, park cleanups. They're helping with paint-a-thon. They're getting trained by Brothers Redevelopment to do the federal lead abatement process of lead cleanup, which is a very lucrative business, and they're getting trained in that. Um, they're helping with um, recycling and trash disposal, like they were at the outreach, at the neighborhood outreach recently, and they'll be at the next one as well, helping residents in the area recycle. So that was the third program that we're seeking funding for from the council, 19 annual action plan in public services realm. Now the remaining funds are non-public service funds. You'll see three repeat applicants the first is the Minor Home Repair Program. That's the program I run out of the CDBG office. Um, we've already sent out over 140 applications. We've received more than half of those back. And of those that have qualified and are verified, um, we have enough to spend all of 2017, all of 2018, and, and actually the reallocation we'll get to in a bit. And so we're seeking um, additional funds because Today, for example, I got two more applications that came in the door. So as we, and we're not advertising right now, but we're year round accepting applications, so you know, as well for the folks listening and council, um, and it is first come, first serve. Uh, so we hope to get another 20 homes completed with these funds. It's for the health, safety, 
accessibility and energy efficiency of the home. It is a grant to the to the resident. Uh, they, but we provide the services through contractors. Arapahoe County Weatherization, which also serves Adams, came in again with an application for seventy-five thousand dollars, which we recommended. This they do an energy audit. They do repair and replacement of hot water heaters, uh, furnaces. They blow insulation. They replace thermostats, and this year. Um, they have partnered with another youth ed, uh, employment program called GRID. And this is a program that installs solar, rooftop solar, and solar gardens. So they're training folks to do that. And they've partnered with Arapahoe County Weatherization, and they'll do um, about four or five homes here in the city with that, those funds in addition to the other things I mentioned. So we're, we're excited to see that come into the community. Then the last one is Painathon. Um, again, Brothers Redevelopment came in with an application. Based on the applications we've already received, we already have more than enough to take care of the funding. We have this from 2018 that we're currently implementing. Um, so they came in with another 25000 for next year. So any questions on the table? Yes. Um, thank you, Cheryl. Uh, would you go back to the audio informational network and um, explain to the audience about the bilingual part of that? That. Um, so, the, the, for example, the Connected, our newsletter, would be read both in English and in Spanish, recorded on a file and ac accessible through the smart speaker. So um, if the speaker is Spanish speaking, they would have access to that and hundreds of other, um, whether it's the ads in the newspaper for what's on sale at the grocery store, to the Denver Post, to um, you know, uh, uh, Medicaid and Medicare documents. They read them in through volunteers. They have over 200 volunteers who do this. And um, make an a electronic file that's accessible through the smart speakers. What they've done in the past has been accessible over the phone. It's been accessible over um, other, uh, the radio. They've tried different things, but this is interactive. It also gives them a sense of not being so isolated. You've got another voice in your room. You've, you've got other people in the building because they're focusing on low to moderate income buildings, uh, apartment buildings primarily, especially seniors. Um, and they train them together in a group. So they all kind of know one another. They get introduced to each other. They start talking to each other about how to use the, the, the equipment they have and what's out there for them. I also have any more questions? Okay, um, and I'll keep going. Uh, for the second half of my presentation is for the reallocation of the $115,840. And a little background here is um, Public Works in the early years of CDBG, I can't believe I'm saying that, but the early years, um, got the lion's share of funding. And we were just getting started, just trying to figure things out. Um, and unfortunately, while they, they, fortunately, they did get sidewalks rolling. You'll see those starting a week from today, by the way. Three of the sidewalks here in the core city will be started. We just had our meeting, to, our pre-construction meeting today. Um, but the bus stop improvements just never got off the ground. Coordination issues, staffing issues, and coordination with RTD. So the CDBG team recommended moving that funding of $30,000 from the 2016 actual, annual action plan and the 2017 annual action plan, 50,000 for bus stop improvements into the 2018 minor home repair program where we know we can get the money spent. Uh, fair housing activities for 4,000. I was able to find um, free brochures, color brochures um, on fair housing so we didn't have to buy them or produce them ourselves. So we're saving that $4,000. And then the residential resource directory we found that Adams County had two such directories that we could utilize instead of producing our own, so that's what we chose to do. We're also investigating the 211 directory as a, as a replacement to that, because uh, they already maintain it and keep it up on a daily basis. So that was a recommended from the team to put the 30,000 from the previous year and the 64,000 from 2017 into the minor home repair program. Then, for the amendments to the 2018 annual action plan um, would be to receive those funds into those programs that are already running 
And then uh, access housing staffing project, unfortunately they had to withdraw their application. Um, we were sad to see them go, but we do anticipate they'll reapply and I hope they do. Um, so in the meantime, we need to reallocate their funds and the DVV program came in and requested additional funds. And also the Small Business Resource Center staffing project we funded last year that's helping small businesses um, in its, uh, and get educated, started, um, expand, survive, anything they, we can do to help small businesses. We'll have a staff person at the center um, who will be bilingual and also producing bilingual resources out there for the community um, to encourage small business development. So that's how it was uh, allocated by the team. And then you've seen this table in your packet, but basically it's $94,000 is going to minor home repair in 2018 uh, is what's recommended. And then the uh, access housing would be split 11,840 to DVV and 10,000 to SBRC staffing. So we had to do a 30 day, but I did 31 uh, day public input, written public input on the amendments and the 2019 annual action plan. Uh, they were sent out to the library and the rec centers and here at the Civic Center, they were online. Um, they were advertised in La Prensa and the Sentinel, but no written comments were received. So um, we're hoping they're happy with what they saw. So in summary, reaching our goals, the 2019 program will hit um, eight of those goals, bringing us up to 10 of the 15 uh, uh, funded and in progress of being accomplished to, to assist in those uh, meeting those high priority needs. Um, so that's two thirds, which is pretty good for the first four years. We have one more year to go on this consolidated plan. And what's next is um, we submit the 2019 and the amended plans to HUD by August 10th. They have about 60 days in which to approve and respond back. That should be before August 1st, which is the start of my new CDBD year for the city. Um, and so any feedback or anything you need? Nope. Council, any questions regarding presentation? First, your lights on. Yeah. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to address the council on this matter? I'll close the public hearing for motion. Excuse me. We need to, do we need to do these individually or can we rattle them off all at the same time? Have to be individual. Individual? Great. Right. Uh, motion to approve resolution 2019-31. Madera. Second. Motion and a second. To approve resolution 219. 2019 sorry, 201931. Resolution 2019-31, resolution approving 2019 annual action plan. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Carried. Mr. Peter. Mike to make motion to approve resolution 2019-75. Mr. Kuzma. Second the motion. I have a motion and a second. Approve resolution 2019-75. Will the city attorney read that title? Resolution 2019-75, resolution approving the amended 2016 annual action plan as amended. Thank you. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion's carried. Mr. Hurst. Motion to approve resolution. Motion to approve resolution 2019-75. 76. Thank you. Mr. Hughesman. Second the motion. City Attorney, please read that title. Resolution 2019-76, resolution approving the amended 2017 annual action plan. Thank you all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion's carried. I'm open for a, uh, another motion. Mr. Madera. Motion to approve resolution 2019-77. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Teeter. Second. City Attorney, please read that title. Resolution 2019-77, resolution approving the amended 2018 annual action plan. Thank you. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Motion is carried. And it takes us to ordinances on first reading. 
ordinance 2213 oil and gas transportation impact fee city council had a heard a presentation on the proposed fee on june 17th the planning commission recommended approval after a hearing on june 18th unless there's anyone on council has any questions regarding the ordinance i will include the material from june 17th presentation in tonight's packet for the record is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak on this matter Come on up. Good evening, Mayor, Council, staff. My name is Ryan Seastrom. I'm with the Colorado Oil and Gas Association, uh, located at 1800 Glenarm Place, Denver. Uh, I'll make my comments brief, but I just wanted to say uh, thank you to staff and thank you to uh, FHU for allowing us to uh, provide some feedback on this proposed impact fee uh, and take some of our comments into consideration. With that, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience who'd like to speak on this matter? Seeing none, I'm open for a motion. Mr. Hurst. Mr. Hughesman. Thank you. Uh, motion to approve ordinance 2213, oil and gas transportation impact fee. Our council is seated. My council is seated. Thank you. On first reading. Yep, Mr. Teeter. Second. A motion and a second. Would the city attorney please read that title. Ordinance 2213, an ordinance amending the land development code and enacting a new section 21-9260 authorizing the collection of an oil and gas transportation impact fee. Thank you. That's for a roll call vote. For the record, eight in favor, one, one opposed. Motion is carried. Okay, ordinance 2230, <coughs> repealing and reenacting re section 3 2100 of the municipal code. Does anyone on council have any questions regarding this ordinance? Seeing none, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this matter? Seeing none, I'm open for a motion. Councilwoman Frank. A motion to introduce ordinance 2230 by council is seated. Thank you. Mr. Teeter. Second. A motion is second. City Attorney, read the title, please. Ordinance 2230, an ordinance repealing and reenacting Section 3-2100 of the Commerce City Revised Municipal Code to clarify the original jurisdiction of the Commerce City Municipal Court. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll ask for a roll call vote. For the record, um, unanimous decision by council to approve. Next item is ordinances on second reading, ordinance 2203, commercial indoor self-storage. Is there anyone on council has any questions regarding this ordinance? Seeing none, is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak on this matter? Seeing none. I'm open for a motion, Councilwoman Frank. Uh, motion to approve Ordinance 2203 on second and final reading. Councilman Hughesman. Second the motion. Right. The City Attorney, please read the title. Ordinance 2203, an ordinance enacting new Section 21-5225 of the Land Development Code, allowing and regulating commercial indoor self-storage facilities, amending Section 21-11200 to add the definition of commercial indoor self-storage, and amending Table V-1, land use table, to include commercial indoor self-storage. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Councilwoman Frank, no. Mr. Huseman, no. All right, seeing no discussion. I'll ask for a roll call vote. For 
For the record, eight in favor, one opposed, motion's carried. Next, we go to administrative council business. Does anyone on council have any administrative business to come before the city council this evening? Seeing none, go to reports. City manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. In addition to the city manager update that was sent out last week, just one additional update. Um, as the city council and I think the community is aware, based upon council direction, city staff has been negotiating something called a regional operator agreement with extraction oil and gas for the last several months. We had sent out a draft of that agreement to city council a couple of weeks ago. I'm happy to say that the uh, city staff and extraction reached agreement um, uh, late the week before last. Uh, last week and this week, we are finalizing that agreement, getting it into its final form, <coughs> uh, translating it into Spanish. We will be sending that final, final agreement to city council this week, uh, while we also finalize a communication plan out to the community and finalize our methods for receiving feedback on that agreement. The intent is then to publish the agreement and initiate a 21-day public comment, to, uh, comment period uh, next Monday, July 8th. So I think it's a very positive sign for the state of those negotiations with extraction oil and gas. Uh, but certainly the, pu the, the purpose of the public comment period is to have uh, an opportunity for the community to comment on that regional operator agreement. Uh, so uh, city council should be looking for the final version of that agreement this week and we anticipate publishing it a week from today on July 8th. Thank you. Returning. I want to call your attention to a litigation report sent this morning. I think that's it. Thank you. I have a couple of things. Uh, first, I want to um, thank the little pub company for uh, choosing to build a restaurant in Commerce City. Uh, some of my colleagues were, the, were there with me today um, to help with breaking ground. Uh, that restaurant will be open and operating by the end of the year, um, as well as to thank the public for allowing myself and several of my colleagues to go to the CML conference um, for additional training. Um, I think those are the highlights. I would like to remind all of our residents uh, to enjoy 4th of July, um, but to also remind them that fireworks are illegal in the city. And we do, uh, they're, they're illegal because we do put on a big show um, so the residents don't have to purchase fireworks <clears throat> and it's controlled in a safe environment. So please have a, a good, safe 4th of July. That will be all of my report. Mr. Douglas, do you have something to add? Yes. Um, Brian, you brought up the operation agreement. When was that sent out to, to council? I believe it was the Thursday before the last city council meeting. I sent a draft along with a memo, a legal memorandum, um, but the current draft that Mr. McBroom mentioned is going to come out later this week. Okay, because I didn't receive any email, and I usually always open and uh, look at emails that are sent from our attorney. Um, because two weeks ago, we, you know, we had big attendance here for oil and gas and our citizens and all that about operation agreement. There shouldn't be any kind of operator's agreement in that fashion forward to us until we get through our regulations. We're, there, are, there are 13 different regulations right now the state has to go through. They're not even through rulemaking 500 yet. And we're entering in a, in, this is a draft operator's agreement? The Land Development Code was amended in November of last year to allow mm -hmm. for a regional operator agreement to set best practices, right. um, but not to grant any land use approvals or to be a vested rights document of any kind. Um, that's what's been under negotiation for the past year. Before it gets approved, um, and a decision has not been made to approve it yet, it has to go per the code through a 21-day public comment yeah. period after which um, it could be approved, it could be modified, it could go out for a further comment period. I'd be happy to look back at the emails and make sure that I did send it to you or to forward it along if I okay. left you I, off the email. I appreciate it because there's, there's been a lot of conversation uh, in the last two weeks. You know, we've had operators come and talk about, um, you know, for us tabling the ordinance all, I mean, for a, a moratorium 
But the good thing about Karma City is we don't have any oil and gas activities. So we did enact a moratorium, would not affect those companies at all. They would continue to operate the way they operate now by whatever supplies or our vendor agreement they have with other cities or counties. Um, as far as Commerce City, we don't have any oil and gas uh, production. Um, you know, let me re also remind everybody, we have a, adjacent to Denver, a 16,000 acre, uh, used to be a weapons grade facility. And uh, we just have the state just sued um, the Army Corps of Engineers because there's still leaks from the, ar the arsenal into our water source. Um, I was very taken back by a water commission the second meeting I was counseled. Um, they said that because of lack of agenda, they canceled it. But I think there's a lot to talk about. Um, I would ask that uh, uh, we reach out to the water district and find out what's going on with that lawsuit. Um, but as far as operators agreement, I know this is in, in, like uh, Jerry just said in, in draft form. I just think it's uh, premature for us to go down that road. Uh, I will look at the draft and let people know because I, I think our citizens were not aware of that coming and, and the foreman is. I mean, uh, two weeks ago, I mean, as far as what was just said today, I know there's 21 um, um, days where people can make comments. Um, right. I did confirm that I did forward you that email, and I sent it along to you again just now, Mr. Douglas. Okay. I, the document has been discussed at length and has been um, indicated that would be sent for a public comment period for 21 days throughout the process when it had reached a point that it was appropriate to release it, but prior to any consideration of approval. So that, I understand, is what the Communications Division is working on right now as a rollout plan to make sure that it didn't rush from finalizing it to going out into the community without making sure that there was adequate publicity around it. Right. But in the past, we've had executive sessions on this to update us on what's going on. And so this is, is, is a camel fastball being thrown here um, and the way this is rolled out. So, um, you know, earlier we just had um, where we approved a oil and gas transportation impact fee um, you know, there's a, a um, analysis um, that needs to be, that could be performed too on all these wells to see exactly what the impact is on us as far as uh, wells coming in and uh, what the cost is and also what the burden cost is going to be uh, on the city. So I'll, I'll look for that email and, and uh, follow up. But uh, um, like I said, this is a bit of a surprise. I understand we've, we've been talking about this for a while, but two weeks ago, uh, this was not brought up in the fashion that, that this was going to be presented tonight. So thank you. Mr. Huseman. <clears throat> thank you, sir. Uh, last week, I had the <coughs> privilege of going to Indianapolis, Indiana for National League of Cities, um, sit on the Energy, Environment, and Natural Resources Committee. Uh, we conducted business, went over some uh, best practices that some other communities are going through, uh, notably some of the stuff that Indianapolis has done since they were the host city. Um, we also worked on some resolutions that they're going to forward through NLC in order to get them to adopt them as the official position of NLC. One of them relates to the uh, PFAS, which, um, as we know, is an issue here in our community with our water supply as well. Um, that's something that is actually moving through the Congress pretty quickly. Uh, both uh, a lot of it in the defense um, authorization bill that's going to be coming up in order to get the Department of Defense to help clean up some of the mess that they've created by using um, AFFF on their uh, firefighting. Um, also, they have a draft resolution that they want to push forward for climate change um, that spells out natural disasters, things like that, and why they want to address that, as well as one on resiliency. Um, one of the biggest things that is coming forward is everybody talks about this infrastructure bill that is supposedly working its way through the bicameral and bipartisan Congress in the uh, White House is that they want to make sure it addresses climate change and resiliency. And so they'll be looking for every project that goes there. Did have the uh, government affairs, assistant government affairs director for the Department of Transportation also brief us. And she highlighted the build grants that are going to be announced in August 
and encouraged everybody to log on there and also highlighted as part of that resiliency and climate change. So that's pretty much what that committee is focused on right now is uh, PFAS, um, which they have a subcommittee that I've also volunteered to be on. Um, we've had some meetings and drafting our PFAS uh, resolution that we want pushed forward as well as the other resolutions that they put together. So um, as far as questions from my counter or my colleague to the right, email was sent June 13th. Originally, we were going to have an executive session the following Monday, but that executive session was canceled and it was up to the council members to call an executive session if they wanted to discuss that document. That was the direction that was given and nobody at that time decided to call an executive session to discuss the regional operator agreement. And so it was left there for the city staff to continue uh, negotiating on behalf of the council with uh, the operator and here in the news this evening they've reached an agreement so the public comment period will be coming soon so thank you very much for the opportunity and thank you for the opportunity to travel to Indianapolis and represent our city and learn about the things going on thank you <clears throat> mr. Davis um, thank you mr. mayor on Friday I uh, dropped into the public works facility unannounced where the city manager and his Entire staff, I believe, is having the offsite uh, finance um, meeting. And I get to watch them candidly work um, and, and, and try to uh, negotiate prices for this, for this city and try to do the right thing for this city. It was uh, amazing for me to sit back there and, and, and truly, they didn't change anything when I came in there and sat down. I don't know if they felt uneasy or, or anything else. They, they looked like they were, they were okay with me being there. But I got to watch our, our, our staff in action. I got to watch all departments work together for a couple hours that I sat in there. And I was pretty impressed in, uh, in watching our staff try to do the right thing for this city. Um, I think that every citizen should be able to see what I saw, and certainly um, this council, to see that they really do work hard up there. And, uh, and try to do the right thing. And it truly is where the, where the rubber meets the road in those meetings. And they bring that to us to make those final decisions. And uh, to see what goes into those final decisions is a lot of hard work. So I would just like to thank all departments for allowing me to sit in there and watch that for a couple hours. It was an eye opener for me and job well done. Thank you, Mr. City Manager and everyone else. Thank you. Mr. Douglas, you lit back up again. Yeah, sorry. Um, I'm just trying to make comments on the, what the city manager and our city attorney have brought up and appreciate that. Um, just also want to uh, thank citizens for allowing me to go to, to Indianapolis. I sit on the Infrastructure Transportation Committee and um, they oversee uh, trains. Um, we also discussed uh, um, our stoppage, which I, I did uh, forward to everyone what Commerce City has done. Um, our, our efforts to make our roadway um, along with the train safe and to roll out of our Bluetooth technology that's going to um, roll out here this fall. Uh, we also talked about mileage based usage fees. Um, right now, as far as gas taxes, gas taxes haven't went up in the state since 1991, and uh, looking at implementing a, a federal um, miles based use, user fee. Um, also on the infrastructure transportation, we talked about uh, drone drone technology um, that that's uh, has taken off here in Colorado for a lot of different applications, especially on commercial, uh, even uh, personal um, with uh, with drones. Uh, with the trains, uh, we have a lot of uh, logistics that come through Commerce City, especially oil and gas, and the holes of those uh, holding tanks. Um, weren't as uh, thick uh, through uh, what they had analyzed. And so with their efforts, uh, there are there are, are several um, pending amendments that are coming forward that will change the way those uh, tankers come through our, our city. Uh, basically, um, in order to retrofit or even build new um, oil, and oil uh, tankers, um, it's going to take them at least, uh, um, I think the estimate was, on a daily basis, they could build uh, 30 a day and not reach the capacity that's needed um, because of all the infrastructure that's happening now uh, and all the different oil and gas uh, logistics that goes through our city. Um, 
I've also, I was able to attend a, um, they have a bus rapid transit, being on the transportation, and we got to take a tour of what Indianapolis is doing. And they have raised platforms, so as a bus comes through any section of town, uh, and, and their, their, their new line, they're coming on here in September, it allows, pedest allows pedestrians um, uh, wheelchair access, doesn't matter, uh, the same platform we have with our light rail. And uh, I wish I could display the video here uh, with you guys just to show exactly uh, on, the, on the tour we took. Uh, also, I was had opportunity to, to go on an um, uh, Opportunity Zone um, tour. And we have Opportunity Zones here in Commerce City, but in Indianapolis, we actually have a um, it's senior housing and uh, income and low, in, uh, low housing um, um, facility. It's located uh, not too far from downtown Indianapolis. And uh, I can uh, share that with, with our council here and, and bring forward uh, my video to um, in our study session. But I, I, I do appreciate uh, the citizens allowing me to go to uh, Indianapolis. Thank you. I got a couple other points I want to bring up. Um, <clears throat> earlier today, coming down Highway 2 uh, at Quebec, traffic get, was get so backed up at that left turn lane um, that semis were going past through the light on up Highway 2, turning on Oneida, which is a weight-restricted road, and taking that up to uh, 72nd Avenue. And uh, that's some of that enforcement. Um, we heard it earlier tonight about Colorado Boulevard, but uh, we really need to um, look at what we can do for enforcement along those right-of-ways. I do want to point out the new flashing yellow that was installed later today at that same intersection. Hopefully that will help with that left turn movement and move some of the um, traffic uh, through onto Quebec without the, the backups that we've seen. Um, I still would like to see staff um, look at studying that for a double left. Um, at that intersection. I think that that would be beneficial for the amount of traffic um, that's going that route. And I wanna thank the staff. I know it hasn't been easy because we're really split as a council on what oil and gas means to us. Um, I know it was a grueling process to get through this operator's agreement. Um, there were some sticking points on negotiations. I'm glad we were able to get through that. Um, I think it's important to also note that the whole purpose of this is for safety of our community. And we do have to have it, um, but we want it to be safe and we want it to be as far away from our residents as, as we can put it. But um, we can't go down the road of total ban without risking um, a lot through lawsuits, especially since the uh, Supreme Court just made a ruling um, property rights uh, impacts can be taken directly to the federal uh, courts, not have to go through the state courts. So uh, we have to make sure it's safe. Um, and that's why we have a best management practice and, and the extraction agreement that has to be gone through. And it hasn't been easy because we've been given constant updates from our staff on what the sticking points have been, um, where, where they've ran into hurdles and not being able to proceed forward. And so I'm thankful for the staff uh, that was on the team to negotiate that for the best interest of the residents of our community. All right, <clears throat> is there any other? We've got Douglas and Hurst. You both still wanna speak? All right, Hurst, you're first. I had the privilege of attending a public outreach event put on by Public Works last Tuesday called Touch a Truck, which was at the uh, Public Works building, I believe off Rosemary, and just wanted to say great job to the staff. I appreciate you spending the extra time um, doing this public outreach. I know my two daughters really enjoyed getting up in all the tractors and the police vehicles and the lawn mowers, and then we obviously enjoyed the uh, barbecue and the music uh, that was there as well, so I just wanted to... Um, reach out and say I appreciate the extra time and effort that was put into that. I know that my family very much enjoyed that, and I hope and it was a really good turnout, to tell you the truth. I hope the community enjoyed that. Mr. Douglas. 
Yes, I just want to apologize. I, I did uh, um, see the email, and I did read it. I just was mixed up with uh, with something else I had on there. So I do apologize. I did read over that, and um, uh, yes, you're right about how things were presented. So um, with that, uh, I will uh, pass that on as far as the 21-day comment period. Thank you. Mr. Madera. I'd like to move to adjourn. If there be no further business to come before the City Council, City of Commerce City, we are adjourned. Thank you all for being here. <laughs>